Welcome to this video where we'll cover everything mesh. And here we're looking at a step file, which is clearly not a mesh. So when you want to convert to a mesh format, right, the easiest thing to do is file export and choose an STL mesh down here. But there can be a difficulty because if I want to export this as an STL and then open it up in my mesh format, say for 3D printing, Right, here's my saved mesh. What if I want to have a tighter or finer mesh on this? And what if this is meshed in a way that, you know, the meshing might show up in a 3D print if it's at a very high resolution? I don't think it's likely, but say you do want to have some more particular say on how this is meshed. Well, saving an STL may not um, deliver all the results that you want. So as another way, what if I highlight my body? We'll come over here to the Mesh Design Workbench, which I believe is native to FreeCAD now. And if I say Meshes, Create Mesh from Shape. Well, if I go with my standard option here, and I say that I want to have an angular deviation of 10 degrees, right, and then I create my mesh. Well, now I have a bit of a tighter mesh, and it may be hard to see um, if the mesh is tighter or looser. So let me demonstrate two ways of doing this, right? I'm going to highlight my body again, meshes, create shape for mesh, and I'm going to mesh this at something like 30 degrees, right? Something big, and that should go pretty quick. And you can see there's kind of a big mesh area right here on the canard. So let's highlight with the same body highlighted. We're going to mesh again, and we're going to We're going to go with 5 degrees, right? A much tighter mesh. So there we go. Now I have two mesh bodies created. If I hide one, you can see this is my finer 5 degree mesh. And if I hide this one and show this one, you can see this is more of a coarse mesh. Likewise, if I go to maybe um, this conical surface here and uh, I show my finer mesh, you can see that that has a more fine mesh than the other one. So that is a way of being able to mesh things tighter if you wish. Now I put out a video a little while ago about SolidWorks and uh, the sort of graphical demands that you can have in SolidWorks when it comes to graphical meshes, right? Because B-Reps will uh, take a smooth surface and divvy it up into a bunch of straight lines, just like an STL file to represent it. And if you have your graphics turned up, it creates a lot of load. So I, I produced some data to show that there really is kind of an exponential load on uh, using tight meshes. And that's true for this kind of mesh, right? It should take a lot longer to run this five degree mesh than it did for a few others. And if I look at what, what this graphical demand is on what we're looking at right now, right? If I fit my um, fighter and then I go to my top view and I try to rotate my screen, you can see that it, it all works, but the graphics are a little bit clunky in trying to keep up because there is a lot of facets to represent. Now, if you have too dense of mesh, right, and it's just too much of a load on the computer, there's a, um, a feature in FreeCAD that is known as Decimate Mesh. And this is a new feature in SolidWorks as well. I believe, it, you know, Decimate Mesh may have come out in just the 2020 SolidWorks version. At least the graphical decimation came out in 2020, if not mesh decimation. Um, at all. So if I go to decimate mesh, right, let me, um, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete my STL. So we're just looking at our highly meshed version now. What if I want to have this be less mesh, right? What if I downloaded this from Thingverse and there's way too many facets for my machine? I'll go to meshes and we're going to go to mesh decimation here, which is right here, decimation. And now it um, it gives me a few options, right? I can do anything from a 0% to a 100% decimation. If I move this to the 100%, it will reduce the density of the mesh as far as it is possible and still represent the shape 
And so I can say, you know, I want to have, you know, a 70% decimation, which would be kind of a lot. I can also down here choose an absolute number. So I have a maximum of, whoops, looks like 2,496,060 faces right now. And, and if you think about your graphics card and the fill triangles per second, of that graphics card, if it's less than 2,496,060, then you might have some lag. And most graphics people say, well, modern graphics cards are capable of millions of fill, tri fill triangles per second, so it's no longer relevant. But in cases like this, you can see how relevant fill triangles per second still is. Uh, so if, if I make this maybe 1 million, right? So that's 1 million, and I say, okay, then it will decimate this from 2 million whatever to 1 million. And it doesn't look that different because mesh decimation really attacks the smallest parts of the mesh uh, to begin with. And now when I move this, you can see how little lag that I have compared to how it was before. And, you know, I'm running a, a, a NVIDIA Quadro M2200 graphics card, which isn't the worst graphics that you can have. So... Uh, this really can have an effect, especially if uh, if you have um, a, a small scale graphics card. So that decimation is a good way of clearing out excess mesh if you need to loosen things up. And just to illustrate this, I'm going to do a 100% decimation on this, just so you can see what's happening on a large scale. Right, this is going through and clearing out a lot of the mesh. And it gives us a simpler mesh with a lot fewer elements. So that is mesh decimation. I'm actually going to close this. So I'll reconvert this into a mesh format. And this time I'm going to go with something like 15 degrees. So there we are again working with the mesh and I'm just going to even delete my step file sitting in there. Now if I come to my mesh, we have a few uh, very interesting commands uh, and I, I don't think I can cover all of these, but I'm going to cover kind of the cool ones here. And the first thing is analyzing a mesh. Now Way of Wood showed how to do this in a collaboration we did not too long ago. And so I'm going to kind of mirror what uh, Way of Wood has said. And um, we have several options when we analyze, right? We can evaluate and repair our mesh. And uh, we can do this one by one or all at once. And so I can choose to, um, I select my mesh format here and I can analyze any errors for orientation, errors for duplicated faces, and it's found some errors for duplicated faces. So I can repair that on the fly. And now if I analyze again, no duplicated faces, right? Duplicated points, no duplicated points, uh, three non-manifolds, and that's immediately repaired. And then self-intersections. And it looks like we have some self-intersections back here, so we'll repair that. And again, these repairs just go so quick. And I can click this Analyze if I want to analyze everything all at once. And it looks like perhaps our repair caused some flip, flip normals. At least that's what I'm guessing. And so we can go ahead and repair that once we're done analyzing self-intersections. And so I can repair everything over here. So I'll analyze one more time. And we've got nothing uh, worthy of repairing here. So that is one, one cool way to analyze. Now, another option that I have on this is I can highlight my mesh. And even though that everything on here is a straight, you know, line, it's just a bunch of straight uh, planar surfaces that are put together to represent a curve, um, FreeCAD is able to estimate curvature. Right, so with this highlighted, I can click this button right here, calculates the curvature of the vertices of a mesh. And notice nothing happens, right? We get this color scale and our model doesn't change. And this can be very odd. In fact, uh, when I first tried this, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly why I couldn't see this. I adjusted my backlight, I went to the settings. Turns out all I have to do is go to my mesh and hit the spacebar to hide it. And now I can see the curvature. And you can see 
um, you know, the, the curvature scale that it gives us to where the tight and loose curvature would be if this was more of an STL, or if this was more of a step that had smooth curvature to it, which is a pretty amazing uh, ability to do that, right? Next thing is I may want a cutaway view of what I'm working with, right? So I'll get rid of my curvature here and show my mesh again. And I can do this from an isometric view or whichever view that I wish. But I can highlight my mesh and grab this cuts mesh with a picked polygon. And let's say I just want to cut my mesh out the, out of the middle like that. And then I right click and I choose to eliminate um, all the material on the inner side of this selection. Well, now I have this nice cutaway view so I can see inside of my mesh. And I can even do like a save as STL and export it um, as a cut part if I wish. I just hit Control Z to bring my model back. Now, of course, if I want this to be larger or smaller, I have the ability to scale my mesh, right? And we can go uh, mesh, scale, and then I can make this, you know, scaled up to a factor of two for twice as big and so on. And uh, we have a pretty smooth, slick scaling ability there. Now, another very interesting uh, command is being able to smooth out a mesh. Right? So I have some like sharp corners right here. And what if I want to smooth that out? Now, when you hear about smoothing a mesh, you may think, oh, if I smooth a mesh, it'll just convert everything back into a um, like a smooth step file with good curvature. Well, that is not the uh, product or the end result of mesh smoothing. Uh, so when you smooth mesh, you are talking about smoothing out sharp corners, but you are not talking about um, having a non-meshed final result. So if I highlight this and we say meshes, smooth mesh here, and it, you know, the number, the higher the iteration you have on this, the smoother your final result will be, noting that you'll still be in a meshed format. So I can go up to like, you know, I think 99 is the highest, right? 99 iterations. And then these are um, on a zero to one scale. So I can say, if I wish, 0 0.9 gives me a high result, 0 0.9, and I say, okay. And now we have a highly smoothed out mesh. So you can see that we're, we still have our, our flat surfaces, right? We're not actually smooth, but this has smoothed out all of the rough surfaces and according to an algorithm has really <laughs> sort of not made this what we want if we wanted to make it more like a step file or reconvert this into smooth surfaces, but it smooths out the file. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I can always hit control Z and uh, that I did kind of an extreme smoothing there, but it, it works pretty well on a minor scale, right? If I um, smooth my mesh and I keep this just as is you can see it does affect uh, the way that we mesh so this could be helpful in a lot of cases um, kudos to whoever developed that all right I almost forgot to uh, include this part but I, I really want to talk about this so I'm adding this in as well here I have my mesh and one way to view the mesh uh, quite easily is to change the draw style down here to flat lines. At least this is available in version 019 of FreeCAD. So these flat lines, uh, they seem to be a little bit more graphically heavy, but uh, they, they make it easy to view the mesh if you're interested in having more of a visual representation. I tend to leave that off because I like as is. It's a little bit more graphically light and responsive that way. How do I want to edit this if I need to make an edit to it? And that's a big question, right? If I go to the sketcher and uh, go into my XZ plane, and I wish to make a sketch, um, maybe I want to cut a hole in the wing, right? So I add a little circle for a hole, and then uh, from the part workbench, I'll do an extrude, and uh, we'll make that reversed. And I apply and close it, right? So there I have this coming out of the wing. What if I typically, as I would, uh, select the body and then the tool and then cut? Well, everything disappears and I have an error message. Fatal error. So I'm going to delete my cut to bring everything back and I have to ask myself, what is wrong? 
why did that not work? So if I head on back to my mesh design, whoops, I clicked the wrong thing here. So if I go back to my mesh design and I'll uh, select my mesh, make a cut here, and I, you know, eliminate everything inside of that. You can see that we're hollow and we're infinitely thin. If this was SolidWorks, this would be known as a graphics body. And graphics bodies, I think, were introduced in SolidWorks 2019, relatively new, but this is the same concept. We're just dealing with an infinitely thin surface. It's not solid. And so you can't really cut it when it's not solid. So control Z to get rid of that cut that I just made. How do we make this cutable? <laughs> I'll highlight my mesh here. We'll run back to the part workbench now. I'm going to choose part and um, create shape from mesh. And um, actually, before I do that, I've got a very, very heavy um, mesh right here. And as I said before, there is an exponential nature to the mesh, right? And so I want to be down on the bottom of the exponential curve. So I'm going to highlight my mesh, run yet again back to the mesh design workbench. And let's go meshes, decimation. I'm going to decimate this to 95%. So I have a 95% decimation. And I say OK. And now we have a much simpler, larger mesh that we're working with. So I'll run back to the part workbench. And again, decimating the mesh is optional, but it's going to save a lot of computation. So now when I highlight my mesh part and uh, create shape from mesh, this tolerance is good. I never needed to change that tolerance. You'll start to see this working, right? We have this down here, sewing faces, and then we're 20% done. If I left the mesh without decimating it, it would take uh, possibly a few hours if I'm dealing with a few you know, million elements to have to sew up. So keep that in mind. You are, by decimating the mesh, saving yourself a lot of computation. Yeah, it, so even with 95% reduction <laughs> or decimation, um, it's still taking a fair amount of time, not, not an unreasonable amount of time, but a fair amount of time to be able to uh, get this to create a shape. And now that we have a shape, you can see our graphics change. Um, we are still in as is, but now we can see the boundaries between the mesh. And that's because all these mesh elements are now actually a shape. And when I go to cut from here, right, I highlight uh, my mesh and notice I now have my original mesh. If I hide this, so there's my original mesh and then there's the shape from mesh. And so I can delete my original mesh now because I now have a shape. Highlight this, highlight the extrude with the control key and I do a cut. Now I've got a hole through my wing, right? That, that almost is like the Dauntless Douglas that they flew in the World War II uh, that bombed in the Pacific. They had a bunch of holes in the ailerons. I, I used to joke that it was so if they were shot at, you know, the, the bullets would go through the holes and not hit the plane. <laughs> so that's, Anyway, that's what that hole makes me think of. But now we can edit our part, and it doesn't hurt to convert to solid um, as well. So if I undo my cut... Highlight my mesh. You can always choose part and convert to solid. Where is that? Convert to solid right there. And now I'll jump back to the uh, part of the video that I spliced this video into. Uh, now, when it comes to actually creating a smooth surface, if you only start with the mesh, that is possible in FreeCAD, but I think I've been going on a bit, so I'm going to save that for next time. Uh, so tune in for the exciting conclusion on how to recreate smooth surfaces from a mesh. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.